Okay class, uh, today you learned a little bit about systems of inequalities, dealing with linear inequalities. Behind me is one of those systems. And today we're going to take a look at how we solve this by graphing the y-intercepts, graphing the x-intercepts, and then looking to where we need to shade. So we'll first begin this problem by looking at the first or top equation. So every time I start a problem like this in class today, we start off by writing this. 0, comma, blank, and blank, comma, 0. These were the order, ordered pairs we were trying to find uh, that would give us both our x and our y-intercepts. This, when x is 0, this would give us a y value out, that's our y-intercept. And when y is 0, we'd find x to find our x-intercept. So we're going to do this for the top and the bottom equations, starting with the top. <clears throat> so in the top equation, I will first put x is 0 in. Since we are graphing the lines first, we're concerned only where it's equal to 12 right now. The inequality will come in handy when we talk about shading later. Right now, we're just going to use the equality. So this is equal to 12. 2 times 0 goes to 0. Negative 4y equals 12. If I divide both sides of the equation by negative 4, I find that y is equal to a negative 3. We fill that information in right there. Then do the same information okay, with the second one. Now y is equal to 0. 2x minus 4 times 0 equals 12. This goes to 0. I have 2x equals 12. Divide both sides by 12, 2. And I get out that x is equal to 6. Fill that information here. Okay. We're going to do a sketch of this. I'll put my sketch right here. All right, I will erase this information for the second inequality, but let's first start with our first inequality here. Graph this. Just a nice simple sketch. All right. 1, 2, negative 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We want to put our dot at 0, negative 3. And then at 6, 0, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. There's 6, 0. Now before I draw the line, I want to make sure I'm using the correct line, whether it's dotted or solid. You'll know there's a line underneath the inequality symbol. This is going to imply that we need a solid line. So I'll connect these using a solid line. Now this is a sketch, so it doesn't have to be perfectly straight. I'll try my best. Okay, So there's my solid line. Now I go back to the inequality and reference this. The line split our region, this plane, this xy coordinate plane, into two regions. The region above the line and the region below the line. So we either have all our solutions up here or all our solutions down there. One of the easiest ways to check which way to shade is to try a point from a region. So you can try a coordinate from down here or a coordinate from up here. Remember, the easiest coordinate to try is the point 0, 0, the origin. So let's try that and see where I should shade. So I put 0 into the inequality. 2 times 0 minus 4 times 0 is less than or equal to 12. There I'm trying to show that 0, 0 either makes the statement true or does not make the statement true. 2 times 0 is 0, minus 4 times 0 is 0. This statement then reads, two, 0 is greater than or equal to 12. You have to look at that and say, is that a true statement? Well, no, it is not. 0 is not bigger than or equal to 12. So I should not include the origin, 0, 0, in my shading. So 0, 0 is left out. I should shade this inequality down. Okay? There's the first inequality. I'm going to erase the work right here and do the same information for the second inequality. So starting with my x equals 0 in the second equation now, I have a negative 0 plus 3y is equal to a negative 15. Again, remembering that I'm using the equality here, we will come back to the inequality, but for making the line, we need to set it equals to. This goes to 0, it leaves me with 3y equals a negative 15. If I divide both sides by 3, I find that y is equal to a negative 5. It goes right there. Now I've got y equals 0, so I have negative x plus 3 times 0 equal to a negative 15. This goes to 0, I have a negative x equals a negative 15 divided by negative 1. x is equal to a positive 15. That goes here. Now I'm going to graph these two points to get the second line on there. So I need 0, negative 5. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That will go here. I did not have enough dash marks over here for 15, but we'll keep doing them. We'll put some more on here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay? 
and we'll connect those two. Again, checking the inequality. This does not have a line underneath it. This is simply greater than. This time I need to have a dashed line. So my dashed line will connect these two points. Okay, it's a little bit harder to see here. But our dashed line goes through both those points. The two lines would intersect somewhere out over here. So I'm going to extend this out to show that intersection point. It does exist. Uh, but again, it's a sketch. If you want to go closer, you could graph them both in your graphing calculator. Right now, we're more concerned about the regions that we need to shade. So going back to this inequality, negative x plus 3y, we now want to see if we're shading above that dashed line or below the dashed line. So again, I'm going to try the point 0, 0 and see if the statement is true. So I have negative 0 plus 3 times 0 is greater than a negative 15. 0 plus 0 leaves me with 0 is greater than a negative 15. That statement is true. 0 is greater than a negative 15. So I should shade the region that includes 0, 0. This time I'm going to shade this direction. So it includes all of my 0, 0 region. Okay. At this point in time, you look at your graph and go, wow, there is a lot of shading on this graph. And we have to identify what it is that is our solution set to this. So at this point in time in class, we talked about labeling things as being feasible or not feasible. Feasible meaning things that work. These are working options. And not feasible meaning these do not work. And so this region is split up, and we're going to work with this region here and look for the doubly shaded spot. The doubly shaded spot is the part that will be the intersection of both solution sets. And so what I'm seeing right now is between the two lines, it's where I shaded down this way and up this way. So this region that is right here. That is our solution region. Okay, and so I'm going to kind of double shade this just to make it a little bit more clear about what we're talking about. It's this spot in between. And we would label that as the feasible region. Which means everything else is not feasible. And we'll write NF for not feasible. Okay, so that'd be the area above the line here, the area below this line here, and technically over on the other side between the other intersection points not feasible either. Well, that is how we find a solution set for a system of inequalities.